You know, maybe we should start with the very basics. Technically speaking, this is not a book. Do you know that? It's not a book. The Bible is actually a library. It contains 66 different books or letters or volumes. It goes by a number of different names. And these 66 different volumes were written by 40 different people over the space of 1,500 years. And they were compiled bit by bit, bit by bit, into the book that you and I can now go to any bookstore in the land and go ahead and own a copy of. And my question for you is simply this. How do we know that what's in the Bible is what's supposed to be in the Bible? See, there are really two prongs of attacks that critics of the Bible will take. Number one is they will attack the composition of the Bible. They will say, look, how do you even know that what's supposed to be in the Bible is in the Bible? What about all the other sacred writings that never made it in? How do you know the ones that made it in are the ones that are supposed to make it in? What about the Apocrypha? What about the Gnostic Gospels? Isn't the Bible just something that a few people put together because it's the writings they want? They left out a bunch of other good stuff. You know? You ever been uh, at the checkout store or checkout line of a store and the headline of the National Enquirer is, Lost Book of the Bible Found? You're like, whoa, whoa, seriously? I got to I need to turn my Bible in and get the new edition? You know, how does that work? They attack the composition of the Bible. Other times they talk, they, they're going to attack the, the credibility of the Bible. Is it accurate in what it says? Today I want to talk about the composition. How do we know that what we've got is what we're supposed to have? Next week we'll talk about how do we know that what we've got is accurate, reliable, or trustworthy. So today let's go ahead and spend some time. Let's talk about how to defend the composition of the Bible. How do we know? that we have what we're supposed to have, that what God actually inspired, somehow just those books wound up in just this book that we call the Bible. Critics are basically going to say this. Oh, uh, I, that, there I am. I'm getting ahead of myself because I don't have much time and I love talking about this. Can you back it up, hon? When it comes to the Old Testament, 39 books written before Jesus, 27 books written after Jesus. When it comes to the 39 books before Jesus, there is no questioning that those were the books that were supposed to be a part of the sacred writings. Literally, there's no debate. The reason is kind of simple. All of those books were written to or around the nation of Israel in a small geographical area by recognized prophets of God that were instantly accepted from the moment they were written as being sacred, God-inspired scripture. And there was literally not been any debate on whether or not any of the Old Testament books are considered part of the sacred writings. They were accepted instantly from the moment they were written. On top of that, when Jesus came, he put his stamp of authority on all 39 books that we find in the Old Testament. For instance, Jesus says these words. He said to them, a crowd listening, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be filled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. The Jewish people divided the 39 writings of the Old Testament into three different sections. Anybody want to guess what the three sections were? Any wild guess? Now the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. And here is Jesus is going... Every segment of the Bible talks about me. He didn't go, well, the two segments that are accurate talked about me, but you got this one in there you shouldn't have. He went to every major section and said, all of them are really about me, my coming, and what I'm doing. He said this and later on. He said, this generation, this group of people, this generation, will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that has been shed since the beginning of the world from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah. You know what's fascinating about that? Abel is from the fourth chapter of the very first book of the Old Testament. The way the ancients arranged the Old Testament, Zechariah was from the very last section of the Bible. And it's like God going, look, from the beginning of your Bible to the end of your Bible, from A to Z, from Abel to Zechariah, guess what? The whole thing you're all going to be held accountable for. 
Jesus had ample opportunity. If there was a problem with the 39 books, everybody called the scripture, the holy writings, the sacred text. And rather than pointing out problems, he affirmed that all was exactly what it was meant to be. So much so that he looked at the 39 books of the Old Testament and said in John 10 and verse 35, they are the scriptures and the scriptures cannot be broken. They are true in every respect. What they say will be forever. So there's really no question about the 39 books of the Old Testament. But suddenly when the New Testament era arises, controversy springs up everywhere. And that's really where people get some of their ideas about the composition of the Bible not being very accurate. There are basically three charges that critics will level. The first is this. The church went 500 years without a Bible. This is what you find written in numerous places that you hear in debates that atheists and theists have. That the church went 500 years and never even had a Bible. Now you guys are going, Bible this and the Bible that. You went 500 years to even have one. Why do they say that? And, what, and how do we answer that? And then they say things like this. Think the church had lots of trouble deciding what books to put in the Bible. After all, you've got these 27 New Testament books that you add in the 39. Everybody says, fine. You have 20. But there were thousands of other writings. And, and the early church took 500 years to figure out between all these, oh, should we do this one, or that one, not this one, or that one, I don't know, we're confused, which one should we put in? They said, well, tons, it took them five centuries to figure it out. And then they say, and by the way, the decisions were made by people who had an agenda. You know what their goal was? Their goal was to make sure that the books they put together had the kinds of teachings in it that they could oppress people and keep them under their thumb. Now, I have to admit, if somebody says, no, oh, no, you know, Christianity, this is our Bible. It's the word of truth. And somebody says, first 500 years, there wasn't even a Bible. Nobody could figure out what books were supposed to be in it. And the ones who did had an agenda had nothing to do with the truth. Would you think that was a very credible book? No, I wouldn't. So how, how do we end it? Is that actually the picture of how things went when how we got our Bibles? Just a little bit of investigation reveals a very different story. And I'm going to attempt to condense a lot of stuff in a little amount of time, which makes it like every other Sunday, I know. But I'm, I'm going to try to condense it down. And I, there's no way, obviously, that we could talk about everything. Well, first of all, there's no way that I can know everything. And even if I did, there's no way we could talk about it all. But I want to hit the highlights. Enough so that you can go, oh, that's how we got the Bible and why we can be confident that the books in it are the ones that are supposed to be in it. The first thing we need to understand is this. Letter, every single one of the 27 books in the New Testament were accepted as inspired scripture from God, get this, from the very day they were written. The moment that they were written out and they began to be disseminated, they were accepted by the church as scripture. They were proclaimed by the church, church as, as it circulated, to be scripture. They were taught as scripture. There was never any doubt about the 27 books we have in the New Testament from the day they were written. Matthew was the first book of the New Testament written, probably around 45 AD. You can find writings in 45 AD that call Matthew scripture. And it was exactly that way for every one of the 27 New Testament books. In other words, the New Testament started out just like the Old Testament. It was written by credible people. It had all the earmarks on it of matching everything that God had taught in the past. And it was accepted by people from the moment it was written. 